recent history at Roland Garros has shown that at the end of the women's final, I like that. it would be Justine Ennen holding the trophy. Yeah. But with her sudden retirement, things have changed. And Ennen's opponent last year, Anna Ivanovic, is ready to seize the opportunity. Ivanovic has quickly established herself at the top of the game. A finalist in Australia this year, she's focused on taking the next step into the winner's circle. She faces first-time finalist Dinara Safina, but don't let her rookie status fool you. Safina has played spoiler already, knocking off world number one Maria Sharapova on her way to the finals. Safina Ivanovic, the women's final, next. Open on NBC, presented by Raymond James. Some style, some flair on the grounds of Roland Garros. It is Championship Saturday. And today, one of two talented women will enter the rarest club in tennis, that of Grand Slam champion. Will it be Anna Ivanovich? She's already captured the new number one rank in the world. Will she? ascend to the title of first-time champion or is it the party crasher today Denara Safina who has come from the second 10 to play today for her first Grand Slam championship we welcome you live to Paris it is the ladies championship here on NBC Mary Carrillo John McEnroe Ted Robinson I think one thing we can feel fairly sure about last year yes she had a, a great player on the other side of the net but Anna Ivanovich came down with a frightening case of stage fright on this day there is no indication she's going to suffer from anything like that today. I, you hope not, because and this is exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm tell you, we've got two young kids who've played mm -hmm. very nice looking tennis to get to this stage. Mm -hmm. Ana Ivanovic has played in this situation a lot more than Dinara Safina, so that should really count for something. And she's been doing some magnificent things out there to get this far. Last year, as you mentioned, that she lost in the French Open final pretty easily, but she has shown in this tournament why she is now the world's number one. Her forehand, it's groff like. This single shot here has become the, the best shot in women's tennis, and she has used it match after match. When she's serving well, when she's returning well, it sets her, oh, look at that. This is, and that obviously, return of second serves is gonna be important for both these players, but if she's got anything to look at on her forehand side, she becomes very dangerous indeed. And hopefully, because this is her third major final, we won't see the kind of nerves that subdued all that great shot making from Anna Ivanovic at the Australian Open final as well. I mean, she's had a, a nice run. She's got much more experience than Dinara Safina, who's two years older than she, but has far less experience in the big matches. I hope for Ivanovic, John, that she played a much better final, at least the first set against Sheriff Holden in Australia. Well, she's getting there, and obviously on paper, when you look at this matchup today, you would have to go with Ivanovic because she's been there before and presumably she's going to learn from her mistakes. But I'm, I'm a big <laughs> Dinara Safina fan, not because I was a Murat Safin fan. Who's a, she's a younger sister of Murat because she plays with a lot of fire as well. And she's come a long way in, in a very short period of time. And something may happen here, Ted, that I don't think has ever happened before, which is a player that come down from match point in two different matches. But this was the first one where she was down 7 6 5 2. And this, quite possibly, this shot that you're going to see in a, right here at the back end could be a career changer for her. There's an argument that Denara was a bit of an underachiever before this tournament. And if you take a look here, this shot here, okay, it went long, but she was down match point. She was about to go out there. She follows it up with another win against Kuznetsova in the semis. This was rather handy. Now, if you think about it, she went out in the court and had to do this three days in a row. So this is quite a nice effort from Denara Safina. Now, the, the problem is she had a day to think about it. <laughs> she was just on a roll right now, so there's a little bit of concern. But she just came off putting Justine Hennen in retirement at Berlin, where she won that Serena Williams she beat. She's on a streak here right now. and. Uh, the paper tells you Ivanovic is going. I think that Safina is a little bit better athletically out there. Perhaps Ivanovic has a little bit more power, but this is a good thing for women's tennis. It's one of those no-lose yeah. situations. Well, the best thing would be if, if these two played a competitive final. It's been a long time since we've had a competitive women's final here. It would be really mm. nice. You know, obviously a lot of this is going to be about serves and nerves. Mm -hmm. And if they're both doing...
doing handling both those issues well, then we could have a very nice looking final. Yeah, I guess the question for Ivanovich is at her time she's been yeah. anticipated to ascend to the champions level in the number one rank, or can Denara Safina in one magical run reach that glorified air as a champion? It is the French Open women's final coming up next live on NBC. The French Open on NBC, presented by Raymond James, brought to you by Raymond James, individual solutions from independent advisors, and by your local authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. Overcast as it's been much, uh, very Wimbledon-like weather indeed for much of the two weeks here of Roland Garros, but cool for the players today, there is wind. And the biggest story today really is that a massive vacuum uh, that keeps Suzanne Lamont, which has been hoisted four times in the last five years by that woman, Justine Annan, who's stunned the tennis world. Right now? Well, she's, she's held it four times in the last five years. Today she'll be giving it to the champion. And it will either be to Anna Ivanovic, the new number one, or Dinara Safina, the woman who beat her in, in the last match she played in Berlin a couple of weeks ago. And that uh, really is kind of the subtext to all of this, isn't it? You know, when Justine walked away from the sport a few weeks ago, it was just a huge vacuum atop, atop the game, especially in the verge of this, the, the slam that she owned. Anna Ivanovic has been the player to seize the opportunity to take number one. She earned that with her semifinal win on Thursday. Now, can she become a first-time well, champion? Well, Hennen still has more points than she does. And I, I, <laughs> Actually, she's off the ranking well, now. So she, the computer ranking, yeah. so she has done that many. What happens if she unretires? <laughs> <laughs> she could still be the top seed for the Open. And sitting uh, there on the left, that's Jacques Roga, the president of the IOC, who is a huge tennis fan, and obviously a Belgian, so there's a huge connection there. A sailor. He sailed for Belgium mm -hmm. in the Olympics, and uh, he's, he's come here several times to watch Justine win this. But it's given both these players we're going to watch today a feeling that they have a better chance. You know, better matchup for both of them to well, play yeah, here yeah, yeah. instead of a Hennen. Let's hope that nerves don't get the best of either player here. It's, it's gotten windy. It is not easy right now for either player to perform at their best. Ah! Ana Ivanovic and Dinara Safina have known each other a long time, and they're very friendly. In fact, they're lockers. In the, there's 128 women in the in the locker room here and those two are back to back a foot apart from each other and of course Ivanovich was helped by the fact that Safina knocked out the woman who'd become number one Sharapova and then another woman who had a chance to be number one who's next to and she said to Ivanovich a couple of days ago look so you know now go after the number one and Ivanovich had no idea she had the chance to be number one if she'd won her semifinal match just smiled, as she always does. Mm -hmm. she's, she's always smiling. So when Saf Safina congratulated the other day after she became number one, she said, I really had no idea. It was up for grabs. Yeah, as Ivanovic said, her team knew better than to, to, to tell her before the match that that was the yeah, kind of prize. Well, Maybe I, that's why Safina told her. To, <laughs> <laughs> to psych her well, out. Why do you always have to go there? <laughs> I waited one minute, they've been <laughs> on the court. <laughs> nice stuff from Safina. And uh, Maria Sharapova, among others, saw this plenty of times. The big swinging forehand. She plays a lot further back than Ivanovich, and she almost has to because her, her swings are so big. a little better, particularly on this court, which could help her here. The best part for me, watching her come back and beat Sharapov, for was seeing the fight, really digging deep, because there's, I've seen her over the years, and it seems like she's gone away. 
and she seems like someone who should be contending for grand slams. Never been ranked higher than nine, although after this, sure win or lose, she's going to be probably the top five. She's going to be nine. She's nine, the win or lose today. Winner. Well, she's going in the right direction. Her comeback efforts, Safina started, again, in that tournament in Berlin, a big Tier 1 tournament. She lost the first set to Justine Enna came back and beat Anna, and after that one, Anna decided, I just don't have it anymore. I don't want to keep doing this. Then she went on and beat Serena Williams and Dementieva, whom she also beat here, as well as Kuznetsova and Sharapova. Huge wins the last few weeks for this kid. I wonder if Murat's here, her brother. Be nice if he made the appearance. Marat Safin, of course, a two-time Grand Slam titleist. Six years older than she is. Oh, it's a nice shot to be able to pull that off from that far back. This different game out there, certainly with the ladies. Both of them about six feet tall. So that high ball doesn't hurt them as much. As a matter of fact, they prefer it. Right there. And you're right, Johnny Ivanovic, you, in this, oh my gosh, she has just crushed the high ball on her forehand side. There you go, you Neither player is that comfortable slicing the ball, which would get it down low, which you would think would be a help. So they're going to slug away out there for sure. Safina's going to try to find some angles, and Ivanovic is going to try to use that power to oh, get it done. Like that, last two points. The I'm first bad. serve I'm struck about 110 that she just blew right by Safina. She hits harder and flatter than Safina. And that's what she'll try to do today, this heavy weather. Ivanovic gets the break of serve to start. We come to you live from Paris in this French Open Women's Championship. And Anna Ivanovic, one of three players within uh, three years of each other. Of course, her rank will change on Monday. She will be number one in the world. That is clinched. Her third Grand Slam final, the story of Ivanovic. Uh, well known in the tennis world now, one of three players who grew up in Serbia amidst war. She used to wait until early hours of the morning when she was a young girl in Belgrade would have breaks. They would not bomb the city early in the morning and that's when she knew she could go out and practice on the tennis court. Finally uh, escaped as all three did to pursue her tennis elsewhere. She ended up in Switzerland. She's had championship form throughout. Of course, Yelena Yankovic in the semis, the winner between those two is going to be ranked number one on Monday. Yankovic is someone who's more comfortable, most comfortable on this court, defensive-minded player. She may have missed her best opportunity to win a Grand Slam in that match. Yankovic was up a break in the third, 4-3, and Ivanovic just was magnificent, won the last three games. Well, there can be no doubt for 
in their results alone, but it ain't over to the last point. Because Safina, as we pointed out in the yeah, opening, yeah. twice was down match point and pulled both of those out from 7-6-5, two down. Some good aggressive work from her to win this point. that Anna Ivanovic moved forward there when she saw that Safina was scrambling and forced to hit with the one hand. So she knew there wasn't going to be a whole lot on this ball. Her shots are so big that she can get to the net with great effectiveness, Anna Ivanovic. And for the tournament, she's been successful up there more than 70% of the time. Even on clay, she can get in because she hits through the ball so well. Two games to Ivanovic. Safina, 22 now, born in Russia, moved with brother Marat, the mom, as a young girl. They went to Valencia, Spain, and that's where her tennis game developed. And that's where actually she was in Valencia as a 14-year-old when big brother Marat kind of caught everybody by surprise by winning his first major at the U.S. Open. Put it nice and firmly. They have played three times. It's 2 1 Ivanovic, but they haven't played for a couple of years. One win for Safina was on clay, the Berlin event we talked about a couple of years ago. Don't think those results matter a whole lot here. They're both so much fitter than they were a few years ago. And Ivanovic, in particular, moves so much better than she used to. That's exactly what Safina has proclaimed herself. And that's what's helped me so much this year, to be fitter, to play with the better players. Is, and I, I think it was very clear, at least in the semis, that when she got, after coming back from the break twice, match points, that suddenly Safina played with the aggressiveness. She was the aggressor against Kuznetsova. She's had a busy week. This, she looks to me physically yeah, fresh. I saw her here three years ago in Fed Cup. I was able to sit next to Christian Beam because we were playing a seniors event like Justine is today. One of the best, if not the best matches I've seen Safina play previous to this event. Best player on the court. Helped Russia win the Fed Cup in the doubles. That's not too shabby, that return. Safina. Ivanovic picked up on that. Pulled that forehand cross court for the winner pretty easily here. I guess you'd have to guess if you're Safina, though, because she hits it so hard. Got to make a move. The crowd trying to help Safina get on the board. Now Safina gets her first game. Use NBC Sports Mobile. You'll get French Open updates right on your cell phone. It's simple. Just text TENNIS 
to 51515. You'll get the news. The score's right on your phone. Once again, tennis. Text it to 51515. Hope you can uh, join us tomorrow morning for Federer Nadal again, live at 9 Eastern. Third straight final. This time it's personal. <laughs> Part <laughs> two. Now it's also history, as these two so often do. This is the first time in open era history that the same two men will play three straight finals on the same slam. When Borg's around, there always seems to be mm -hmm. records being tied or broken. Some of them his. Very yeah, nicely done from Ivanovic. She's really gotten a nice jump in this match. She looks alert. She looks aware. She's moving well, which is always so key with her. You see that forehand there, man, which I like, because you talked about how flat she hits it, but she used some spin there. I think she threw uh, Safina off in that point. That's a good sign. But she got a little lazy on that one. Safina yeah. lifted a racket at it. That's a low percentage play. have worked so hard on their conditioning, their movement, improved. You can see that it's obvious with both players. They're still trying to get each other off balance, use the angles. Such a big court, the biggest court in the world. Most room, the side and the back. Try to utilize that. And Donald uses an unbelievable amount of the court when he plays. Uh, Ivanovic was doing just before this match. That's her trainer, Scott Burns, an Aussie who's worked with a bunch of players before, trying to make sure that she was very mobile, agile, ready to go. What was this, Mary? Like 10, 15 minutes oh, yeah. before? Yes. This is just to get her warmed up. Oh. Warm she is, 3 1. Ivanovic, French Open was in the championship Ivanovic. weekend, and coming up this week, Tiger Woods is back at the U.S. Open. And you'll see it beginning Thursday, 3 Eastern on NBC from beautiful San Diego. Tiger's going to pair with Phil Nicholson. There'll be primetime coverage next weekend, Saturday and Sunday, the U.S. Open on NBC. that we just saw who trained Ivanovic got her ready to go both he and Sven Grenevel Ivanovic's coach were very aware of the fact that she could overtake the number one rankings and after Safina beat Sharapova there were three players this woman Yankovic and Kuznetsa who still had a shot to be number one at the end of this tournament they didn't want the kid to be distracted by that so there was supposed to be a, f a photo op of the three who could be still number one they gently but firmly said, Look, can we not do that? It was supposed to be a couple of days ago before Ivanovich knew. <laughs> I said, can we not do that? We don't want to make her aware of that. We don't want to put extra worry, distraction, pressure on the kid. There's Scott Burns there. And Sven Greneveld, unfortunately, cannot sit in the player's box today. And there's a story behind only, that. Only in tennis. <laughs> There's a, and it's a, I don't know why more clothing companies don't do that. He's a coach and the trainer. In fact, Safina wears the same line of clothing 
she asked Sven how to beat Kuznetsova before she played Kuznetsova in the semis. And Sven told her a couple of things that said, all right, I'll, I'll tell you about that one. After that, you're on your own. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's mostly with Ivanovich. He also works with Sonia Mirza, who's already gone over to the grass courts in Birmingham this week with his assistant. But because these are two players wearing the same line of clothing, he can't sit in one box. Absolutely, Ivanovich, two breaks now in the first set. Here on NBC. They all counts. And I guess the, the player, you know, picking up on the theme you were talking about with the coaching thing, the player's partly responsible for this, but how strange to have an Ivanovich looking for to win her first major and not be able to have her coach I'm sitting in her at least where she can see where she can make eye contact ah! she can look up and see her parents her brother they're here but yeah it's a little it's got to be a little yeah, strange it huh? but it happened last year because Justine Enna is with the same that's her that's her brother Justine Enna was with the same clothing company as well so he was. He had to mm -hmm. sit on his hands for that one. That's a nice step. This is exactly what she wanted to be doing out here a year ago. Just wasn't quite ready to go for her shots and, and play with less stress in her first major final. This is her third, and I think it's showing. Well, you see it in so many different sports. It's very, very difficult to get it done the first time. And certainly more of a comfort level and a different opponent. I mean, let's be honest. Justine Hennon, she, I almost feel oh, like she should have her tennis clothes on under this and, <laughs> you know, play the winner. <laughs> she could get out there. She was here practicing uh, earlier in the tournament. What was she doing here practicing? <laughs> I don't get it. She's still got a couple of tennis academies and some <laughs> corporate stuff she's got to deal with. She looked good, by the way. Hitting the ball well. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Safina too happy. She gets riled up like a brother. Maybe that wouldn't be a bad idea right now. She's obviously nervous. It's not going well so far. But she should have won that point. That squash shot has become uh, something you see in virtually every match in the men's game or women's. Just sort of taking crazy swing at it. to say that's what's going to get her in the match her athletic ability she moves so well on this court this could save her john don't you think that anna ivanovich knows as well as anybody that safina knows how to come back i mean that's oh, got to yeah. be in your mind unless her coach didn't tell her about it either <laughs> there's only so many newspapers you can keep from one woman <laughs> in our open, you know, players have won a major. Justine Ennen did it here in 205. Mesquina in 04, they won after saving match point once. No player has ever won a major saving match points twice. It's sort of quite exciting if that were to happen. You'd see less players giving up, I'll tell you that. So life 
for Safina here. And, and the glasses on the right is uh, the mom who's so much a part of both Marat and Dinara's tennis, although not actively coaching right now. And as always, we'll have a recap for you and highlights of today's women's final. A look ahead at Federer, Nadal, all of it when you check in afterwards today at NBCSports.com for our online French Open wrap-up show. Marat Safin, Dinara's big brother, was here. He's now ranked 73 in the world. He lost early on in straight sets to Nikolai Davidenko, and he went over to Queens in England to, pre to play grass, get ready for Wimbledon. It's a pity he didn't come here, though. And an hour away, his kid sister's in her first major final. Dinara watched when Marat in 2005 held off a match point against Roger Federer in the semis. Beat Federer 9-7 in the fifth and then beat Leighton Hewitt in the final for his second major title. She's watched a lot of him. Well, he's, not, he's not too fond of uh, playing at Wimbledon and, and on the grass, so <laughs> he's talked to him very disdainfully. And Denara did let it slip a little bit in an interview yesterday with the press here that you know, she would not mind it if Murat had made the decision to be here. She's got, she's got excellent preparation. I must say she's really, her footwork looks good. We've talked about Mar what Murat's come up with in his career, the two uh, big slams. Got to the semis here once. This is by far already Safina's best ever result. What is it to get the Saf and Safina again, Mary? <laughs> you gotta help me with this. I just can't anymore. <laughs> You just it's, don't care. It's been too many years. <laughs> it's, but, it's not like the Eastern Europeans with the Ove and the Ovas. Exactly. The that's girls just add a vowel. Feminine. Yeah. Some of the cultures, that's a... That is the tradition. Yeah. is back in the set. So tomorrow here in Paris, you can really can't get tired of this. Federer and Nadal, the two that are still premiering the sport. This, though, is the place where Rafa's king. He's never lost a match at Roland Garros. Federer and Nadal, a third straight French Open final. It's live tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Eastern. Well, you see Rafa leads 10-6 in the big lead on clay. Roger got it done in Hamburg last year, which is in conditions like this. This would definitely help Roger to be the heat, not mm -hmm. wilting well, some of I, his energy. I got to tell you, don't think it's going to get yeah. hot tomorrow. Tomorrow's forecast: sunny in mid 70s. Okay. <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> well, 70s is in 80s or 90s. No, that's true. But after a week of this yeah, kind I'll of weather, I'll believe it when I see it. Actually, has been closer to winning on the grass at Wimbledon. Yeah, yeah. Roger, so far, has lost three years in a row in four sets. Now, yesterday, Federer came to net a ton of times. He made the hard volleys and, and yeah. missed the easy ones, which is interesting. Clip the line there. He made some unbelievable volleys. But uh, there was times where he let it slip, so he's going to have to tighten that up tomorrow against Nadal for sure. Ivanovic got the new ball, so these balls are flying a bit, but she seems to be in relative control. Still a break up, lost one of them. She 
hit two tremendous forehands, but that shot there when she brought it, I remember Connors doing that, and he he would be great at for the most part. But it actually makes it a tougher shot. When she took this back in here, that ball's kicking up pretty high there. That's got to be well timed. Sometimes it's better off to let that ball come down. Got to pick the right time moment, which is very hard on this surface to pull the trigger. Things are so much easier for Ivanovic when she gets in that first serve with real regularity. In the semis against Yankovic, she only served at 55%, and she said she knew first and foremost she had to serve better in this final. She started this game serving at 77%, but she's missed her last couple. And Safina's won the points. And remember last year, as you see how poor the second serve, and that's been a problem for both women in this French Open. Even there, now there was in a case, her toss went off terribly on her in last year's final here. And she still seems to have tosses, but she has an amazingly elastic shoulder. She certainly chased that, sir. Her, her team and her physio that we saw earlier have discovered that she's got an almost unnaturally elastic shoulder that allows her oh, that, that when that toss goes off, she can still go get the ball and, and hit a respectable serve. Well, I hope she doesn't make too much a habit of it. create problems. And this is not just in game now. She's 40 love, and she was up two breaks a few minutes ago, and now back to Deuce. is very solid. It's got some nice spinach. She hits that unbelievably well, I think. Got a chance to tie this match for the first set out of 4 all. It's a good safe shot. Pulls Ivanovic off the court. And Safina, again, it's that recognition that she has shown for weeks now on this play. And these last couple of games, again, the word that she herself has used a lot in her interviews this week, aggressive. After coming back from the brink twice, she says, I have to be aggressive. Well, she says that it, the biggest change for her has been her mentality. She said for the last couple of years, she feels she'd get unlucky. She'd say, I'd start to not even look for the answers. Now I'm trying every time thinking what's working, what's not working, finding solutions. And that is <laughs> that has changed her whole career this I, last month. I, I'd see her often if it before 40 love games, she just would sort of throw in the exactly. towel for the game, you know, try some crazy shot. And now she's digging in and playing hard every point. And, She's being rewarded big time. Here. Now bad. she's making the errors. That was too bad. Points there, and she's in the low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly, the win is tricky out there. When her second serve points one, even uh, under 40, lower than Ivanovic. Now that, that's you know. To defend the women, it's it's that's even true in the men's game. I mean, it's, look at Nadal. I mean, this guy's you're, you're losing your serve more than you're holding when you're playing first or second. Ah! 
Jazz calls. Chakovich talked in the press conference about how he needed to serve big and wasn't able to, and that he was hurt on the second serve in particular. Certainly Federer is going to have to serve very well. Maybe the match of his career to beat Rafa Nadal in three sets tomorrow. Win three sets on clay. It's tall order. Shows you how good he, Nadal is if it takes an unbelievably special from Federer. Who's got 12 slams. And... It's already one of the greatest players that ever lived. When you get tight, and the footwork starts going like it did with Anna there. She just sort of reached for that forehand, dumped it in the net. It's a nervy game. Oh, oh, oh. This, this one. <laughs> Both players tightening up here. Ellie, end of a two week run here with the tennis world coming to Paris. There was only one woman entered this year who'd ever won this event. It was Serena Williams. These two playing for the championship. It'll be a first for either one. And there's been five breaks in nine games. Four of the last five. It's nice to see someone win a point off their serve. That has the best serve she's hit today. Safina really kept the ball deep. Ivanovic on her heels. She likes to dictate play, be more aggressive. She's not as good as when she's playing defense. was very close oh, to maybe being long, but once she hit the return, that meant they were going to play it. It's a little mentally lost it for that split second. She's down break point. Another chance to break. on that shot. It's three straight times she's gone to Safina's backhand off the serve. She's been able to win every point on the ad court. And you can see that she tries to stay much closer to the baseline than Safina, who likes hanging further back, more of a defensive clay court position.
controlling the center of the court, putting it away. And one of the reasons why Ivanovic can get to the net so much easier than Safina is because she tries to hug this baseline. If she gets anything short, she'll either put it away from there or make her way in with a swing ball. That was an outstanding point, though, to get herself a chance to first set point. that shot that moon ball they call a lot more often in the men's and women's games players of today they really hit the ball a lot harder and go for a lot more and that was a good change of pace from Safina Absolutely. The last thing they practiced on this court, and I was watching Ivanovich's practice, was handling moon balls. The last thing Ivanovich tried doing was putting away, going after those shots. Now she's missed a couple in this all-important game. Chance for five all. Place That's interesting you say that about Ivanovic, yeah, yeah, yeah. Greg, is that obviously they scouted. Safina used the moon ball oh, yeah. effectively in her semis. It was really, it seemed like it threw Kuznetsov off. Players aren't as patient as they used to be because they have all that power and they have a tendency to get a little over anxious out there. and defense so devastating for his opponents. Ivanovic has hit every serve to Safina's back end. This game, second set point. Five minutes worth. But the first set goes to the serve, Anna Ivanovich. Live for the Women's Championship in Paris, and Safina serving to start the second. That is a very important shot for her, Safina. If she's going to pull back and win this match using that back end that up the it. line. Ivanovic likes to run around her back and hit that big forehand. She's definitely leaning over to that side. That could be a key shot for Dinara here. Yes. She used it twice. And Safina gets a quick hold to start the second set. Our Mercedes Benz powerful performance, and that's it. She's tried to whack forehands Ivanovich. 
So now Dinara has some power of her own, but uh, definite edge goes to Ivanovic off both wings. Likes to hit the ball flatter. And it's helped her pull this first set out. But if Safina can mix things up and use her ability to hit topspin, the comfort level she has out on this court, she can pull back here and make this a match. Certainly the heat is not a factor. It's been surprisingly cold here. When was the last day we saw a sun? I mean, it's yeah, this. Live struggling through this overcast <laughs> week in Paris. <laughs> Man, what a miserable assignment. <laughs> <laughs> the women's <laughs> final here at the French Open. And, uh, Is there a prettier place to be cold? No. no. That's Not true. one. <laughs> <laughs> We're hot and hot. Oh! Oh! these two women play for a championship with the queen of this court sitting in the first row watching. Well, it's a pretty spirited rally, but it's hard to go for that big a shot when you're <laughs> off balance. Sitting here thinking, could you imagine next year Rafa Nadal just saying, that's it, I'm done. I hope not. I'm, I'm guessing row. that's not going yeah. to happen. Yes. <laughs> She's had personal crises and injury issues, but I never would have guessed that she would have walked away two weeks before this year's French Open. As the great Martina Navratilova said, I mean, her only question was, are you sure? You know, maybe why, why don't you just yeah. take a break? WTA yeah. so quick yeah. to yeah. take her points and ranking she, she asked. She asked for it. Justine requested it to be the yeah. finality of it. She wanted to they never listened to one. us about anything else. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, all of a sudden so, they listen now. So here's the here's an interesting discussion for the McEnroe dinner table. <laughs> okay. five, oh five years ago, Justine Annan and Kim Kleisters played here for the championship. Justine won the, her first of four. Who would have thought five years later they'd both be retired? Yeah. And Venus and Serena Williams are still playing. Belgium was on uh, top of the world. Uh, they went, we, we went from having no Belgians to two of the very best in the world to no Belgians again, just in the last couple of years. But the Russians, I mean, the, the, the presence of Russians in women's tennis, is, it's overwhelming. 18 in this French Open. Virtually every player you watch swinging and volleys them. Right? They're better at hitting the ball when they're taking a full swing at close to net than they are the old traditional way. It is rather amazing.
her second of the day. She had 30 coming in. So that's been a bit of an issue for Safina. But she's serving at about 70% and Ivanovic serving even higher. 76. Hasn't stopped them both from being broken multiple times in this match. They both know the importance of not Whoa! having to put in a second ball oh. because they both own such big return games. The wind is wreaking some havoc out there, which makes it tougher to serve harder and be as precise. You have to play it safer. It does help the returner. That was a nice serve. It skidded off the line. First ace. Safina hit extremely tough overheads from unusual parts of the court. She finally oh, just said, I'm going to end this point. Exactly. And it wasn't a bad drop. She had 26 shot rally there. Just nothing left. Very well handled by Anna Ivanovic. Now you see these next couple of points kind of an impact this takes on Safina. <laughs> Seems that she hadn't quite recovered yeah. from that long rally. Wanted yeah. to play a quick point. And that could really cost her now. Early in the second, early down the set. was excellent and it's uh, difficult to tell where she's going to hit it. It is key that she mixes it up. Of course she likes to pull that back in cross court over the low part of the net but this is critical. Be able to pull this shot off as well. And John I like which, how she's handling this. You know she, Safina taking her time again. She's got another life in this game. Played a nice controlled constructed point to draw it back to Deuce and here we go again. In the past, she might have just let that go. I'm too tired. I'm aggravated. She would have started rushing, so this is, this is a good sign. That she's forcing herself to slow down. <laughs> she admits that she and her brother share the same hot Russian blood. <laughs> but she's taken care, especially in the last couple of months. She's got a new coach now. A Croatian player, Zelchko Kryon, who used to play on the tour until quite recently. In fact, a guy who was good enough to take a set off of Andy Roddick a few years ago at the Australian Open. And he has told her he, she has got to manage herself, her emotions on the court. Not just the mental side, the emotional side of her game. Now that's been mentioned to her big brother a few times yeah, as well. <laughs> and that, there we go. 
this is the second quality we, we come to know and love. Well, you're the younger sibling. You've got the family name, <laughs> and so you, you carry the burden of living up to that in so many ways. <laughs> and this. Boom. Well, good for her. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd approve. Yes. <laughs> uh, we've seen it from her big brother time and again, that's for sure. Such a talented family, these two. And, uh, yeah, we've seen him get, yeah, we've seen quite a bit of this over the years. Very charismatic, this guy. A great player. This was here at the French a couple of years ago. He won a shot, and then, yeah, then he kind of followed it up a little Quit bit. Good showing off. <laughs> Dinara Safina joked about that last because she says, you know, she's seen it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Sign of the Times. Kind of a bunch. And the biggest YouTube moment this year in tennis, Mikhail Yuzny, another Russian, Russian, whacked himself in the head with his racket in Key Biscayne and cut himself. Blood dripping down like he was a, oh! like a wrestler. Respect of a couple of hockey players, you know, a contact sport. Ivanovic, the last couple of minutes is just hitting the ball so crisply right now. Full of confidence here. She's going to be tough to hold off. Safina is going to have to dig down again. That's the thing. Ivanovic is up a set. She's up a break. Safina's almost got her just where she wants her. She's <laughs> getting there. 5-2. So I'll hold it. Love. Ivanovic, Safina. Looking to compose. A little extra treat for our coverage of Wimbledon coming up here on NBC to ask your favorite tennis athlete or NBC tennis expert a question. Text the word bench, then your question to 51515, or you can just go right to NBCSports.com and there's a chance uh, your question will be answered during our Wimbledon coverage. Standard text message rates apply. She's going to go for a winner. Oh, See, she took the big swing, but then just changed gears nicely. Surprise, Ivanovich.
breaks down in the first. She had fought so hard to get herself back to four all and only to lose the last two games. She's digging a deep hole here again. Two pretty easy misses on that forehand. 30 all. Oh! Teetering on the brink. I've heard her big brother say that too. <laughs> Whatever that was, it sounded familiar. She did learn that in Valencia. <laughs> and if we've offended anyone, we, we apologize. <laughs> Anna Ivanovic, who was smothered in the, her first Grand Slam final here a year ago, now up a set and a break. And our Travelers Hawkeyes going to take a look at where the two players are actually striking their returns. Well, it's certainly a testament to what Mary has been talking about, that Ivanovic likes to hug the baseline, and certainly Safina, more defensive-minded, likes the ball to come down a little bit, wait for it. Oh. It's a comfort zone. Obviously, these games for Ivanovic she even more it. taxing to see if she can close, to see if she can close for the first time, and knowing the player on the other side has fought her way out a couple of times already. by Ivanovic's ability to play. She's doing it better than I've seen her in the past. Play some defense, oh, find her time, and wait for the right moment. That's certainly a key to success on this court. When to go on the offensive. She's done a good job of that today. illustration of what I was just saying her ability to play some good defense and she actually was had an opportunity to pull that point out Safina is trying to take it to her step up her power game Time force Ivanovic to make a move. For a second, it looked like she was going to take it in the air. That was a good decision from her. Considering this is her first major final, she's acquitting herself well, isn't she?
trying to problem solve out there. You can see her try. <laughs> That's just a key shot on Ivanovic. That's a heartbreaker for Sophia to <laughs> watch that forehand go by. Oh. It was bad luck because actually she, when that ball hit the net, it threw her off and she got out of position. And allowed this slight opening for Ivanovic to hit the winner. That slice, it sits up. Just enough there to throw Ivanovic off. Who's dumped that forehand in the net. She's got to know it's going to sit up. Take a step closer. Yeah. That's making up for it in the hurry. He does have that distinctive fist pump, doesn't she? Got mocked. I think Yankovic did it once after winning a point in, in their semi on Thursday. I kind of I, I I like that that fist pump. I mean, Serena. Williams does it, Maria Sharapova yes. does it. It's not a fist pump thrown into the air to the fans. It's more inward. It's to yourself. And Ivanovic said that after playing in two major finals and underperforming, she says, I was thinking too much about the result. What If I win this match, not what I have to do to win the match. Today she's playing differently. Staying in the moment. With herself there, though. She had it lined up. I mean, that was no good reason to miss that one, except that <laughs> also <laughs> it could have given her 4 2. It could have given her a right, chance, a chance for 4 2. It also had double fall because that was not too thrilled that she threw that in this couple points ago. Safina so a chance to tie here now in the second. Huge chance. Safina stepping in to challenge that second serve. <laughs> yeah, That's what I should have done the last point. <laughs> That's what she's telling herself. Nice little correction. <laughs> True. Yeah, you got you. Right away. She's just such a beautiful, pure striker of the ball. Ivanovic. She's had to learn footwork because when she was growing up, it's a very famous story that we learned from her last year. War-torn Belgrade. She had to practice inside an empty swimming pool. So there was no running. I mean, it was a hitting. Mm -hmm. It was hitting. <laughs> you could see. I mean, her best strokes today are still the shot she aims right down the line. Now look where she. Now look at biggest tennis court in the world. Short to try to cover the whole court, the huge territory that Mary was alluding to out there. That's why it's such a good time for the drop shot when you can hit either ball.
Avantage Not looking too positive right now. I don't know what she's saying to the family. Or I thought she was she's saying she was finished, but she's not speaking English. Not after what she's done this tournament. the game and she's two from a championship. <laughs> grab some new balls now. So many players you see grab the new new racket. Do it again tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern. 6 a.m. Pacific live for the men's final. Another Federer Nadal showdown as Rafa goes for four in a row. Can Federer finally win the last remaining prize for him in tennis? Bjorn so, Borg gave a, a very long. There's more Russian from Sofia. Bjorn Borg gave a, a very lengthy press conference today, and he he maintains that if Federer wins his first French Open tomorrow, Bjorn Borg is ready to proclaim him the greatest of all time. Oh! And now the anger continues for Safina. I don't think she's, honestly, I think she's fit enough not to be physically tired. I think she's, her emotions are getting hold of her right now. She always looks kind of overheated at this stage of her matches. <laughs> Her mom, Rausa, who taught both Dinara and Marat and a bunch of other players, including Dementieva, had a play back in Moscow, was saying the other day that she always thought it would take this kid longer to become a champion than Marat. That Marat had a lot of talent and a lot of, you know, he just had more of a game to put together at an earlier age. And when Dinara was asked about that yesterday, she said, my mother never told me that. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> she said that? That's her third double fault. And she was down a set and five to these other matches. It wasn't two service breaks. And yes, there have been some Good return games from her. <laughs> it's asking an awful lot if she were to go down 5 2 again. Oh, hold on. Mary, you said it in the open that you thought this was about serves and nerves. Well, Safina's nerves have not been a problem. I think whoever can maintain their poise at this stage gets to win their first ever major title. I think nerves are always going to be a story when two young players who've never before gone all the way try to do it, especially against each other. They both know what a big chance this is.
Uh, who stands up and for how long? That's what these things come down to so often. And here's a chance for Safina to get inside Ivanovic's head again. The crowd is, wants to see a longer match than an hour and a half. They're going to start pulling for Safina. Oh! Six women's finals here have been straight sets. And the only one of those that was even really competitive was Serena Venus. The last third set to decide the women's title here was Capriati and Kleisters in 01. <laughs> Baby crying. <laughs> That's all she needs at this point. <laughs> Crush. <laughs> Yeah, that ought to work. That always works when, you're, when your kid's crying. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> bottom. The offending baby has been removed from the premises. Play on. Oh! Oh, wow! She could not have been going for that angle! <laughs> you don't <laughs> play, <can't> I? <laughs> her wrapped her, wow. wrapped her shoulders around this one, a second serve ace. Just curled right yeah. around it. And Skidding off the yeah. line. Well, she doesn't want to get pigeonholed in, into that. You know, she doesn't want everyone to know that she always waits to be down a set in 5-2 <laughs> to make her <laughs> mark. At least 4-2 this time. Tell her to calm down, but she had a chance to come Every in and volley, didn't she? She could have come in right there. She hung back, found the net. But this is some, uh, again some excellent defense from Ivanovic. Impressive. Hesitant on that forehand, oh, but she just uh, missed one, just like it. She just didn't go after it. And she moved back, got herself out of position. Here's her chance for that 5 2 lead. Sucker. <laughs> She'll take it. <laughs> oh! Check. Ball was called out. Oh, little. Ivanovic says it's a wrong yes, mark. Exactly. And Safina went over and circled. There's no official video at the French Open. Red clay. The ball leaves clear marks. Uh, the only time it's questioned is which mark. That's what Ivanovic is saying here. And she thought she had the 5 2 lead. Yeah, 
sure they don't dis intimidating look there. Boy, and even though in defeat there, that's well done by Ivanovic. Yes, you get almost everything back. And keep in mind, Ivanovic thinks it should be 5-2 already. She should be serving for the match. Taking chances on that second serve this game. I sort of sense that was coming. Safina is walking the same tightrope she navigated in the 16s and the quarters. Get that first serve and kick it out wide to Ivanovic and open the court. So, this is a relatively easy ball for her. is still generating winners. I've got to believe it would be a huge boost for her if she could just get through this game. boost of energy or total energy drainer. I don't think the 5-2 thing is going to work too well for Safina. If she loses now after this much effort. Safina to finally end this long game as we now go to our NBC studios in New York and Bill Patrick. Let's see if Safina can make a run here.
Showed some nice variety. The occasional slice, which I hadn't seen a lot of. That got Safina back in the point. The depth of that shot opened up the court for that winner. Oh! Ivanovic's serve crack here. That served to good effect, and Sofina hasn't really come up with an answer. Continues to go out wide to her back end. And a lot of points doing that. Grand Slam. What? Think about the, the countdown that must be going on. Probably, perhaps not in Anna's mind, but certainly in her family and her friends. That point counter, five points. That's four eight. points. It would be the closest 6-4, 6-3 if she wins yes. this game that we've seen. Ago, how soccer explains the world and it told much about how people in America oh, for example yeah. could learn about countries and cultures through soccer and I think we're seeing you could write the same book about tennis ah! these young players from Serbia that grew up amidst war bombings having to leave their country one Novak Djokovic won a title in Australia and now Ana Ivanovic two points from joining her. the charm for Anna Ivanovic. Anna Ivanovic. Not a bad week in Paris. Number <laughs> one in the world and her first major championship. And there are some proud 
the Serbs. The Serbian flag is apparent in the stands, and she wants to outdo this time-honored tradition. That Pat Cash know what he was starting when he did this. She got a ladder. <laughs> <you know, so laughs> Well, be, be careful, be careful And you can't blame her. Yeah, that's a tricky move. She's going right up through the Royal Box to get to her family. Oh. Good athletic ability. She didn't uh, not only showed it there, but in the match, how far she's come. Proved her uh, movement on the court. Her brother, physio trainer, there's the mom, the brother wearing the hooded the sweatshirt, dad. I, I just think, John, it's been great for us as Americans to learn about these kinds of stories, to learn what these young people, the three great well, serve players, uh, had to go it's through. It's a great point. It puts it into perspective, number one, and it shows you how badly and how far they would go to willing to try to get it. And it's hopefully a lesson for us in America dig down a little farther and well said too John on Safina that was an outstanding effort in her first slam final but today no question the better player is the champion Anna Ivanovic she won the last three games of her semi-final and then eight of the last nine points to wrap up her first major championship. And no drama, no miraculous comeback for Dinara Safina, simply a title and a well-earned one. She played like the champion throughout. And the proud family from Belgrade Family and friends and Serbs, the Serbian flag being waved proudly just above that section. We'll be back for the championship trophy presentations at Roland Garros. Now time for the Coupe Suzanne Long Lawn to be presented. And Justine Ennen, whose retirement changed the complexion of the women's game just a month ago, making an appearance here. I was we just learned of it this morning that she would be here to present the championship trophy. Shocking that she left the game uh, a couple weeks ago before defending her title. Surprising, but cool that she's here yeah. to present the trophy. Talk about f having some mixed emotions. I would ima imagine that's mm -hmm. some of what's going on in her head as well as Dinara Safino, who's got a lot to be proud of. Mary, by the way, has gone down to the court. She'll be talking, we hope, with both of the players today. And there is the four time champion here in Paris. The championship she grew up dreaming that she would one day win. She won it four times in five years and really as dominant in her clay court appearances here as Rafa has been for the men. She's accompanied by Christian Beam, the president of the French Dinaris Tennis Federation. Dinaris Remember, she was only five, five and a half. Dinaris Probably the most talented Dinaris player I've ever Dinaris seen, Dinaris a female player in the history of this sport. The last person that Justine played is that lady right there, the finalist, Dinara Safina. Mm -hmm. You know, just right there, that gives you a sense of what you mentioned, John. See how Safina towers over I was Justine. I just thinking that. Well, two women today have really taken leaps forward. Dinara Safina with her biggest run ever, starting to fulfill what's been expected. And of course, Anna Ivanovic winning her first major two days after reaching number one in the world. truly say that is a today that is a million dollar smile 
And we'll come back and hear from both runner-up and champion in Paris. Very proud moment here for Ana Ivanovic. The Serbian flag has been raised and the anthem played. Serbia, but it touches other corners of the world. Switzerland, where she went originally to pursue tennis, and Australia, where Ana Ivanovic has extended family, and she's become an extraordinarily popular person in Australia. Congratulate Anna. She really deserved to win. It was the third final and God lost three. So it was your turn today. I want to say well done to her team. Sometimes they will be annoying. With I my and all this. Okay. Of course I would like to say, say thanks to my team also. Thank you. My family, my coach and uh, all, all who is sitting in that box. Thank you so much. <laughs> Is he going to translate that whole thing? <laughs> the annoying part? Did you ever say that? <laughs> I may have. I'm going to defend him. Thanks a lot to Bokic and um, all the personnel who is working for this tournament. Really doing such a good job and there is nothing to complain about. I sent it under my breath. Je vous remercie les ramasseurs de balles et tous ceux qui travaillent à l'organisation. Vous avez fait un travail extraordinaire. J'ai vraiment pas du tout à me plaindre. Fantastique. And of course to the public. Guys, thank you so much for coming and supporting me. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Monaco, but unfortunately, I don't speak French. But one word I learned: Je t'aime, Paris. Well done. Anna Ivanovic Omiko. First of all, I would like to congratulate Inara for a great tournament and great last couple of weeks and giving me a very tough match today, so congratulations, keep up the good work. I'm sure we'll have many more finals. <laughs> then I would like to thank um, all the sponsors who make this uh, tournament possible, uh, Tennis Federation of French, um, WTA, uh, you guys were amazing through all the week, you make it so special for us. Um, ball kids, linesmen, everyone. It was it was just amazing to hang out with you guys and see you through whole two weeks. <laughs> um, yeah, I would like um, to thank uh, my team, who was a little bit loud, <laughs> but they were emotional as I was. So thank you guys so much. <laughs> Some of them even made a trip from all over the Europe to come to the final today. So thanks for the effort and support. Obviously, all the fans I have here, or back home, all around the world, thank you guys so much. Um, 
Yeah, it, it's been just amazing. As, as a kid, when I used to go by bike to the, the practice, I used to dream of this. So thank you guys for making it even more special for me. And I look forward to see you guys again. Thanks a lot. That's a heck of a translation effort. That's a uh, long journey in a short time from a swimming pool in Belgrade to a champion moment, a great play of Paris. And Anna made reference, I think, Acknowledge her own journeys that her uh, her victory today is going to be felt and there'll be some reverberations in other parts of the world and she has become a highly popular player even in Australia where she spends a fair bit of time now to prepare for the January hard courts there. Anna Ivanovic raising the Coupe Suzanne Langlon in Paris. The French Open on NBC, presented by Raymond James. Brought to you by V8. Not eating enough vegetables today? Could have had a V8 100% vegetable juice. And by Lincoln Financial Group. Get to know your future self at lincolnfinancial.com. Interesting sight on the platform in the middle of the clay is for just a moment ago, Ivanovic and Justine Nenin posing for pictures as they did last year when the roles were quite reversed. Ivanovic really froze and just could not play anything resembling her game. She lost one and two and just really John carried herself and played like she was a champion for virtually the entire two weeks. Well, the sign of a champion is to learn from your mistakes. And when you're young, the beautiful thing is, is that you embrace that. You're not afraid of losing. And certainly against such an experience and tremendous talent of Justine Hennon, it was hardly surprising that she lost. Disappointing, yes, that she lost that badly. But you can see that uh, with that Australian Open final as well, that she was far better prepared to handle the nerves on this occasion. And on Thursday, there was a moment when Ivanovic herself had to be... Wondering, she was two games away from losing. Lady Yankovic was up 4-3, a breakup in the third set. But Ivanovic found championship form, and she won the last three games. She two breaks. Yeah, she probably had seen a couple of Dinara's matches when she came uh, back from match point down to in inspire her and to keep her going. All right, we mentioned Mary is, uh, is courtside and awaiting, and we believe it's Dinara Safina making her way over to talk first with Mary and then obviously we'll hear from the champion as well. I will hear now from Dinara, Mary Carone. All right, thanks, Ed. Dinara, first of all, congratulations on the last month of your life. How is it that your career has changed so dramatically and so well? Well, I think um, just all the hard work that I've been putting by the years and day by day is just paying off and I'm really enjoying this moment. What was the moment like, stepping on the court to play in the first major final? How different was that from all the great tennis, all the great competition you've had, trying to win a major today? Actually, I was feeling pretty good, but I think I was just um, a little bit tired, just everything mentally and physically. I, w I mean, I had such a, too many tough matches, so I hope next time when I'll come back, I'll be a little bit fresher for the final. <laughs> that one game, that seven-deuce game, the famous, now it'll be the famous baby crying game. It showed so much maturity that you figured out a way to compete so well in that. What, I mean, it was a beautiful thing to see. Was it, was it something for you to fight through that kind of a moment? Well, I still had some tears during the match today because I, I wanted to do more, but I just I could not. My body could not anymore. But, um, well, it's, it's such a great experience here to play with the full stadium. It's not many people can leave this moment. <laughs> Denata Safina, you did plenty. Well done. Thank you. All right. Ted? All right, there, a little fatigue, she, she admitted to. Well, maybe it, mental? Well, it, it was a busy, well, mental, absolutely. I mean, she said that, but also physical, because she had, this was uh, a, a quite a busy week, second part of the week. And so when you combine the two together, and she'd never been in that situation before, uh, you hardly surprised that that may have happened. All right, looks like we're getting on a 
Ivanovic with that big uh, smile. Uh, you can understand. She doesn't want to. She doesn't want to give it up. I don't blame <laughs> She's her. grabbing that thing, Mary. On it. Congratulations. Nice little trophy you've got there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, I mean, uh, this was <laughs> this was my dream since I was a little kid. So I just I'm so thrilled and, and excited about this moment. A little kid practicing in a swimming pool, Hear, hearing the echoes of a swimming pool, and now you hear the echoes of all these fans. Is it more than even you thought it would be? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, all the way I, I've been uh, dreaming about this since I was a little kid. I used to go to practice by bicycle and, you know, swimming pool and everything. And, you know, now being here and having opportunity to compete for this title and for a dream, it's just <laughs> so thrilling. Why did you win it this time? Why, did, why could you do it the third time? I really tried to be in a moment. It was obviously a little bit hard. I think we were both very nervous today. But, uh, you know, at the most important point, I, I believed and I tried to step up and do my game and not think too much about the occasion and just focus on, on what I had to do in order to win the points. And I'm so thrilled and happy to be true. We talk so much about the Anna Ivanovic smile. You smile even when you're hitting your shots. You were tears when the Serbian flag went up. What does this mean? to your country, that Novak Djokovic has won the first major for your country, now you've won the second. Yeah, it's just amazing. You know, we never dreamed that we could uh, we could have this uh, coming, you know, from Serbia. And last year, we three of us, we made a big boom here in the French <laughs> Open. And this year, you know, we're coming back. We, we're winning a Grand Slam titles. And I think it's something that came so fast for all of us. And we have great support back home. And I'm just so happy to have this title for my country. And it was a very, very emotional day. A big boom indeed. Number one in the world and your first major. Ana Ivanovic, congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> Two weeks for me. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Ted, back upstairs here. Very, very, you know, they had major celebrations in Belgrade last year because they made finals. Ivanovic made a final. Djokovic made a final now. Can you imagine what the celebrations will be? Two champions already. I can only imagine. And there's, and there's more to come, yes, you feel, that's with, these, exactly, with these exactly trio, right. especially Anna and uh, Novak. Alana Ivanovic, the women's champion at the French Open in 2008. We'll take a look at Federer Nadal tomorrow. We come back to Paris.